Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect, independent consultant, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson, number 81, we'll take a look at the workflow event pattern, which is actually a pattern of reactive architecture. In lesson 46, we took a look at reactive architecture patterns. Uh, these patterns that can be used for self-healing and self-monitoring systems, those that are automatically able to configure themselves, be situational or self-aware, and also be able to repair themselves. And just for a quick review of these, so we can see where the workflow event pattern fits in. Uh, we kind of started that journey in Lesson 46 uh, with the thread delegate pattern to allow our systems to grow and scale as our business grows. Laying on top of that, we had the consumer supervisor pattern uh, that allowed our systems to expand and contract to support elasticity. And then uh, we have the workflow event pattern to be able to provide self-healing capabilities through uh, programmatic fixing of transactions. And then we have the producer control flow pattern. Now the producer control flow is another self-healing mechanism within reactive architecture to be able to apply back pressure. And then we had the threshold adjust pattern, a particular pattern of a broader class of configuration patterns to be able to be self-configuring. And then finally, the channel monitoring pattern. Today in this lesson, we're gonna actually be looking at the workflow event pattern. Uh, Self-healing mechanisms, ways of being able to programmatically fix transactions. And as a matter of fact, um, the code for everything I'm going to be running can be found in my GitHub repo at github.com slash WMR513 slash reactive. Let's take a look at the workflow event pattern. So the workflow event pattern in its basic form, and then we'll look at an example and actually run this. Um, has an event producer which sends an asynchronous message to an event channel. And then we have an event consumer asynchronously pick up that message to process it. If an error occurs, that event consumer then forwards that message onto another event channel, uh, which a workflow processor then picks that up to try to fix it. That workflow processor tries to programmatically fix the error and try to figure out what's wrong with it. And if it can fix it or attempts to fix it, it resubmits it back into the original event channel. Uh, but there, of course, are a whole bunch of class of errors that can't be programmatically fixed and that are sent to a human to be able to manually fix and then resubmit. Let's actually take a look at an example and see how this pattern actually works. So what we're going to do is asynchronously process a group or basket of trades and see what happens when an error occurs. And so I have a trading client which is asynchronously sending trade orders to an event channel. Eventually we pick up those trade orders in a trade processor and start to process those trades. But what happens if one of those trades gets an error? And because we can't just kind of talk back to that trading client. This is all asynchronous. As a matter of fact, let's actually see this problem in action. And so here's what we're going to do. The bottom left-hand side is going to be the trade orders. The top left-hand side is going to be our trade processor. Ready? Let's go. Oh, dear. Look at somebody typed in the word shares on that buy for Apple 1331. But let's take a look. See, maybe it'll work. Oop. And sure enough, it didn't. Notice we got an input string 1331 shares number format exception and Java parse long. Oh, because our contract for trade instructions says that the number of shares has to be a long value, yet somebody typed in the word shares. So let's apply this pattern to see how we can programmatically fix this type of error. And so what happens is this. The trade processor ends up picking up a trade. Now when it gets an error, what it does is this. See, if the trade processor spent some time trying to fix and determine the problem with that trade, what is it not doing? And the answer is it's not picking up the next trade. And this is the whole point about reactive architecture. Um, like our human bodies, when an error occurs, uh, the four aspects of reactive architecture are delegate, isolate, contain, and fix. So we want to delegate the problem, try to contain it, isolate it, and then repair it. And so in the spirit of reactive, delegate that trade 
to another person and just move on to the next one. That's how we get that responsiveness. And again, I would encourage you to look back at lesson 46 uh, to see kind of the underpinnings of that whole reactive architecture thing. But anyways, trade processors now saying next, next, next. Workflow pro processor now picks this up and says, oh yeah, this is that shares problem. You see the trade processor can send a lot of other opaque information such as uh, the type of exception or any other kind of information that would be helpful for the work pro workflow processor to pick this up. Workflow processor strips off the word shares, sends that changed trade back up to the event channel, and the trade processor picks it up. The trading client has no idea that any of this is occurring. Now, if the workflow processor can't fix the actual problem or says, I don't know, I've tried everything, I can't fix it, then it sends it to something called a dashboard. This looks like Outlook or Mail app uh, on the Mac. Um, basically, there's an audible bing, and this, 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 by the way, dashboard is an application or something that sits on a person of importance desk, like a senior trader or a warehouse manager or something like this. And so an audible bing happens and the senior trader says, whoops, I got an error. And they open up that quote message. And in that message is the actual payload of that particular request. And so they type in, oh, negative 1,000 shares. Hey, um, hey, hey, Tom, did you, did you mean a buy for negative 1,000? Oh, no, no, I, uh, just make that 1,000. Okay. And so they change the actual payload, hit enter, and then it resubmits back into the queue for processing. Let's actually see the results of this in action. And so here we go. Let's try this. Um, so what we're going to do is this. The bottom is going to be the same basket of trades. The top left-hand side is going to be our processor. But on the right-hand side, let's start our workflow delegate. Now, this is waiting for errors to occur. And here we go. Oops, 3313 shares. Okay, let's process and see what happens now. Now, watch what happens here. So notice it's getting close, 22, and boom. But look, I just received another trade. Error sent to workflow. Look on the right-hand side. Receive the shares, trade fixed, and notice it actually got back to the received by Apple 3313. And as a matter of fact, uh, if that was too fast for you, you can pause, uh, go back about a minute, and actually watch that again. So this is one way of actually programmatically kind of fixing errors. And so here's the homework for all of you. You, you all didn't know listening to this that you would actually have homework, did you? <laughs> so, so your homework is as follows. Um, take a look at your production logs. Um, just you know, kind of just start browsing through those. Take a look at how many errors that were I, that were received in that log that could have programmatically been fixed, and we can apply this kind of pattern, uh, asynchronous or not, to be able to kind of in the back end be able to re re fix these errors. Now, before we leave this lesson, I just wanted to show you one consequence of this pattern. Um, I'm sure a lot of you just noticed it. The fact is the workflow event pattern unfortunately does not preserve message order. Notice that buy for Apple 33 shares was before the 1293, but look where it is now because it was received somewhere in the queue it was resubmitted. And so the point is um, it's not impossible, of course, uh, but it's, uh, it's a level of complexity if that order does matter, which of course in trading it does. Um, the trade processor would know that that error occurred, take the context, which presumably here would be the, the, the um, account or the brokerage account, and then queue that off in a FIFO queue so that any other trades that come in for that brokerage account get queued up. And when the error one gets fixed, then it dequeues the rest of those. And so there's a little bit of complexity in this pattern as one of the consequences of it. So for more information, I'm extremely excited to announce the release finally of Neil Ford and I's book, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture, which I provide the link here on Amazon. It's 422 pages of everything you wanted to know about the fundamentals of architecture. Really excited. So, so please take a look at that book. And also, um, of course, where these lessons are housed on Software Architecture Monday. And also, I do private training classes as well in some public at conferences. But um, uh, please go to my training website. See the uh, both microservices as well as 
architectural trainings that I do. And of course, for those public events, you can always go to my upcoming events uh, to look at where I'm at at conferences or online public training. So this has been uh, Lesson 81, the Workflow Event Pattern. Again, my name is Mark Richards, and thank you so much for listening.